accounting perhaps has been part of the problem with sustainability because not that we're doing anything nefarious, but accounting, I feel like has led to short-termism with inside organizations. Next quarter's profits are much more tangible than something that will happen five or 10 years down the road, even if making a sacrifice now will lead to a greater good in a decade that's harder to quantify because it's so far in the future. Accounting, I say, maybe has been part of the problem, but we could also solve it. What does accounting have to do with sustainability? Essentially, everything. In general, accounting isn't the first thing that comes to mind when most people think about sustainability, whether that means climate targets or diversity on boards. But just as research and regulations around sustainability have expanded in recent years, so has the field of sustainability accounting, which focuses on the activities of an organization that have a direct impact on its environmental, social, and governance aspects. Beyond that, however, accounting researchers say that sustainability approaches and new global standards should be integrated into general accounting practices to take into account all aspects of an organization's performance from the big picture to the bottom line. Welcome to the Delve Podcast, an initiative of Delve, the thought leadership platform of the McGill Desotel Faculty of Management. I'm Robin Fadden, your host for this episode. On this episode, I talk with Desotel accounting professor Brian Wenzel about the role of accounting, accounting research, and accounting standards in facilitating how organizations reach their sustainability goals. As it turns out, many people are talking about accounting and sustainability, including at the upcoming McGill Accounting Research Conference, which is taking place at McGill on June 7th and 8th, 2023. The goal of this year's conference is to bring together and promote discussions among accounting scholars and practitioners to share their insights on sustainability within the accounting profession and capital markets. This episode of the podcast is a collaboration between Delve, the McGill Sustainable Growth Initiative, and its director and Desotel professor Javad Nasiri. The Sustainable Growth Initiative is also co-sponsoring the conference. Without further ado, welcome to the podcast, Brian. Could we start by talking about the practical or even cross-disciplinary ways that accounting and sustainability are linked? So I might ask you a question first. Like, what do you think accounting is? My perception is going to an accountant, but also knowing that all businesses and organizations have an accountant. They need to record their transactions, their expenses, their revenue, et cetera, et cetera. That's like more than what most people I think understand. No, no, no. I mean, that's probably the boring side of what accounting is. Accounting just communicates. That's all we are. So we're just communicators. So yes, we do record information and we like have output, but there's a purpose to that. We're taking information from someone and then we're communicating it in a different way to someone else. So that's all we do in accounting. That sounds like very nice but we just share information with others. So that's how sustainability fits into this because we're reporting on it. We're doing something, whatever that might be, diversity metrics, carbon emissions, material composition. There could be a lot of raw information that goes into something. We can take that, aggregate it, and disseminate it in a in an understandable way to a broader audience. So when you say communication, you know, a lot of people, and me included, might think, oh, is this numbers? But it's more than that. Maybe this is the accountant in me. I think everything can be turned into a number at the end of the day. So if I want to communicate something, almost anything can be quantified. That might not make sense up front, but I can count something. Just counting the number of instances of something that's qualitative now becomes quantifiable. So even something that's a bit more abstract than a number, that can be turned into a number and then reported to someone. That number can be tracked over time. It can be compared to somebody else. And that's how we can monitor and share this information with others. Right. So if we look at carbon emissions, a lot of management dictums say if we can't measure it, we can't manage it. If if I can't measure it, well, one, why are we measuring it? So maybe somebody wants it. Either the company just cares or maybe governments care or the shareholders care or the consumers care. Some There's got to be a reason that we're monitoring it and quantifying it and tracking it. Then that's where the accountant comes in. There's a lot that can go in. Carbon emission sounds, that's an easy thing to capture. That's a very complicated number to capture. There's a lot of raw puts that go into that to at the end of the day come out with just three numbers scope one two and three emissions a lot that goes into that but then that helps us track it over time 
Why is accounting responsible for sustainability? Why is it linked in with the part of a business that is responsible for sustainability? Again, you might think of accountants, we're just tracking numbers or communicating numbers. And the role we have in accounting is to maybe like turn off the lights at the end of the day. That's all we can do in the accounting department or the accounting area of a company. But it's our role because we are the communicator. Nobody else in the company, the business, the organization, the government communicates. It all comes through the accounting department. So accounting is central to almost any organization we can think of because we take something from one place and then disseminate that piece of information in a different way to someone else. That's why we're responsible for it because we're the ones tracking it, monitoring it. The accounting wouldn't be the department in any organization that reduces the emissions. We can just track it in this emissions example and then that could help us make decisions going forward in the future. The people who do reduce the emissions rely on this tracking. Exactly. They have to rely on the numbers. They Or they give us the numbers and we give it to somebody else, a decision maker, and then they'll give us information back. And so we're always like the linchpin in all these decision making areas. We're always in the background. Accounting is always in the background. We're very like central to everything, but we kind of like hide in the corner. We're touching almost anything that's happening in an organization. Exactly. So let's get into the conference. Why did the McGill Accounting Research Conference decide on the theme of sustainability this year? What topics will the conference cover yeah. as well? The third one, we wanted to be a bit more focused, have a like a hot topic, if you will, something that's important or that we at least care about and then set the theme. I always thought I struggled in my research and like, how can I contribute to sustainability? Because I research not just accounting, but taxes. It's something that even a bit more abstract that's removed from sustainability. But this is like one way I feel like I can contribute to sustainability. And it's just, it's hot in the profession right now. So it's just like a nice time to have the conference. Related, the International Sustainability Standards Board, it's a new initiative via the IFRS Foundation. There, it's a standard setting body around the world for almost every country except the United States that makes the accounting rules. They've just established the ISSB and one of the main offices is headquartered here in Montreal. So this is another reason we thought it was a nice time to have the sustainability theme. That makes sense, right? Yeah. Tying in with the creation of this standards board. So what kinds of topics will be discussed? When I think of sustainability, it's a broad topic and I try to put everything into buckets. And so one of the buckets is what we refer to as the acronym ESG, the environmental, social, and governance aspect of a company, or C, the social, the environmental, and the economic aspect of a business. And so we're hitting on each of those three topics. So we have a couple of papers looking at emissions. So either what leads into voluntary disclosure of carbon emissions, because it's not quite mandatory everywhere yet. A lot of governments have signed on to the Paris Climate Accords, but getting that down into the business level isn't exactly mandatory yet. So what leads to voluntary disclosure of our emissions? Or conversely, when we mandate disclosure of emissions, what are the outcomes of that? And so we have two different papers looking at those different aspects. We have a paper that's looking at board diversity and the implications of having gender diversity on the board. And then we have some others related to governance. So how can I set compensation structures that incentivize managers or employees to engage in sustainable activities? Or if I align myself with governmental policies, what are the impacts of that aligning my businesses with what policy wants to happen? And we also have like a a keynote speaker. So uh, one of the board members of the International Sustainability Standards Board is coming and he's going to open up the conference, which I'm really excited about. So it's a brand new thing that we're doing. So we'll all have a talk with him about that. That's great to have that person doing the keynote yeah. as well to set the tone of what's happening right now. And it's here in Montreal. We're one of the main offices in here as well. So it all hopefully all ties together. talked about standards and governance. There are different ways to define sustainability practices and goals and standards and governance and these kinds of things. What are some of the ways that sustainability in accounting shows up in an organization? Where in an organization would sustainability be talked about in terms of accounting? 
The high level answer is everywhere. So when I think about sustainability, sure, it is climate change or governance policies, EDI, DEI practices. Profits are also sustainability as well. A business has to be profitable to remain around at the end of the day. An NGO, a non-profit still has to have funds coming in. So I can't be sustainable if I don't have money coming in. So at the core, accounting has always been sustainability in that respect. My definition of sustainability, and this differs from everyone, it comes from the Brundtland Report. I don't know if you've ever heard of it or if any of the listeners have. It was a report commissioned by the UN in the 80s, and the outcome was like this high-level definition that sustainable development is just meeting the needs of now without sacrificing the needs of the future. So it's that balance between short-termism and long-termism of any organization. So profits, that's all. That's accounting. That's the outcome of accounting. But any other metric, anything I can quantify, that accounting has a role in monitoring that and tracking it and disseminating that at the end of the day. There's a sort of this question of the tension between growth and sustainability, yeah. right? Yeah. So we're talking, you know, we're talking about profits, but we're also talking about growing profits yeah, and, exactly. and how that can be reconciled with sustainability. I will answer this. I have strong feelings about this. I feel like accounting perhaps has been part of the problem with sustainability because not that we're doing anything nefarious, but accounting I feel like has led to short-termism with inside organizations. Next quarter's profits are much more tangible than something that will happen five or 10 years down the road, even if making a sacrifice now will lead to a greater good in a decade that's harder to quantify because it's so far in the future. Accounting, I say, maybe has been part of the problem, but we could also solve it. And it's just, we've been working on this for decades, just trying to balance these different ways of reporting and disclosing and just disclosing on other sustainability metrics can help address other issues. It's not required necessarily to disclose diversity inside my company, the emissions, the pollution that I'm having, at least within the financial standards. If we can find a way to standardize these disclosures and just look at it and quantify quantify it and track it that could help and theoretically will help address it because we can actually see it going forward. And addressing these long-term numbers and things like net zero 2030, yeah. net zero 2050 to a business that is concerned with this year's or even yeah. this quarter's profits, that's in the future. But things like this conference, I think, and is just more and more talking about accounting and sustainability can perhaps influence that short-term versus long-term way of thinking about growth and profits. Exactly. Exactly. That's the hope and the goal, at least. To what extent can accounting support an organization's sustainability goals, whether they are short-term or long-term? Accounting is that central node in a company. So accounting is primed. We're probably the only area of an organization that can handle this, we have to take the information and communicate it to somebody else. We are central to the decision of this. How can accounting research help move the needle on reaching climate objectives like net zero? Sure. So accounting research, it could be theoretical. So it's just modeling what might happen in an idealistic world. You need models to even guess what might happen. But things are already happening within organizations. And so we can aggregate that data and look at, and which is what we're going to do in the conference. Here's what we have seen that's happened in these organizations. And here has been the outcome of these organizations. If it's good, that could create a standard for how we can move forward. And if some bad things, you know, less than ideal outcomes came from any sort of disclosure or monitoring. Now we know that and maybe we can adjust it and create a better policy or a standard going forward. Okay, so yes, it can affect policy and standard making and things like that. Accounting, well, academic research in general, accounting is kind of in its own weird area. So we kind of create our own rules in accounting. I like that. I'm not sure if everybody does. I wouldn't really want a government telling me exactly how I want to communicate, disclose something, and report something. Because when the political process gets into things, then politicians take control of the reporting. So this is where academic research in general comes into play in accounting. Like we create our own policies. So we need to make sure we're making the best policy going forward so that we don't do something bad where politics comes into play. So staying objective. Staying objective. Of course, that's part of <laughs> academia in yes, general exactly. is trying to be the objective party, yes. doing the research in an objective, slightly longer term way. Some of these studies take a long time, but the outcome is usable yeah. 
research. Oftentimes, academic research and accounting as well, it feels like it can take too long. But part of that is we need the data. And then you have to synthesize the data and write it. Well, you have to be an accountant in it. Then you have to write it to communicate it to somebody else. But that objective, that focused approach to it could lead to better outcomes. That's one of the things that I think, you know, some people, including myself a few years ago, didn't quite understand how much data is needed to come to even broad conclusions. You, you can't just do it on a year's worth of data. No, you can't because that, that one year, could, that year could have been 2020, right? So, <laughs> which is not the best year to say what's going to happen in 2030 or 40, so. You talked about ESG. You mentioned that a little bit. How is sustainability in accounting related to it? It seems like they're intertwined, but how exactly are ESG and accounting intertwined? I'm always coming back to this communication role of accounting, right? So we take the information, communicate it to someone else. ESG or any of these acronyms we might think of, they're fun because there's a balance between the different stakeholders. So I might need to do something for the social aspect for my employees that might be detrimental to the environment. Or maybe I want to reduce my emissions to help the environment, but that's going to have a profit impact. And so then my shareholders may or may not be happy with that decision. There's always a balance in what we're trying to do with sustainability and accounting can come into play because that's where we just monitor these numbers and disclose it. An academic could look at the numbers and do something, but even in an organization, you can just look at trends over time and you just project, literally project something to see what might happen. So we're going to have to make a sacrifice here to meet this goal, or maybe everybody wins at the end of the day. We don't know unless we can actually look at the data and the numbers that are collected by the accountants and sent out to everyone. From an accounting research perspective, could universal standards be created for how organizations measure and report on sustainability efforts? Yes, and this is the goal of the new International Sustainability Standards Board. So I wouldn't want politicians to come in to dictate. That's the accountant in me that wants to stay aside from the political process. But we already have universal standards for financial reporting. There's options in that sometimes as well, but there's all, there's a framework in how we disclose and arrive at these numbers. That's the goal with sustainability reporting as well. It's been voluntary for the past couple of decades on disclosing certain aspects of sustainability, but the ISSB is trying to bring that all into one centralized place to create a universal set of standards that could apply to everyone. And it's important because if we have five or 10 different frameworks of sustainability, how we might disclose things, it's hard to compare across companies, organizations, governments, jurisdictions. But if we have one central framework, one central body, then everything is standardized. And then we can be comparable across time and across individuals and organizations. Giving organizations access to these standards or just even access to what other organizations yeah. do can help benefit them yeah. in the long run? Is exactly. that Exactly. Well, if you think about like carbon emissions or greenhouse gas emissions, that sounds easy. Like I just need to know what my emissions are. But my emissions... They're not just what I'm producing, but it's the emissions from the electric grid. How does an organization know what that is? You need somebody to be able to quantify that. My emissions inside an organization or a business particularly is also the end use of my product. Everything across the supply chain are the emissions within what I'm doing. That's even harder to quantify and monitor. So you need some centralized framework to say, here are the rules, here's how we will, we can collect this data, and here's the impact of it. Along with the policy impact question we already talked about, can accounting research impact organization sustainability goals? Can it impact corporate social responsibility standards? Nobody's forcing anybody to pick up this research and create a policy around it. Whose responsibility is it, and I'm thinking about the standards board, to argue that this research should impact policy and that policy should change to reflect it? All prior accounting policy rules have a lot of that comes from academic research. Academics are on all of the standard setting boards as as one arm of what we're doing because we can look at data in a different way than practitioners can and that businesses can or that governments can. So we have always kind of had a say in this, like one vote in what's happening because we can look at it from a different way. 
either we look at what we find interesting and then we research it, or we could see what the standards board wants to look at. And then that gives a signal of here's what other people are saying is needed and interesting. Then maybe we can find a way to tackle that from a different way than everybody else in the game. Yeah, I think that's intriguing to some people about how policy gets made yeah. and to know that academic research are, researchers are sitting together yeah. with practitioners with industry with government to figure out what will work exactly. for everybody governmental policy right that sometimes can just come out of who knows where it gets a bit more rigid and standardized at least with accounting and it, it's fun that's that's why i love my job so i get to contribute in a lot of different ways contribute is a good way to put it rather than influence i'm just one voice we're all just one voice in the grand scheme but if a lot of us look at things in different ways and we all kind of come to a similar conclusion that's pretty strong evidence of here's here's an approach that might be beneficial and that's why it's important to have a conference yes. <laughs> about this <laughs> what do you hope the conference will achieve or what do you hope the outcomes of the conference might be i'm very very interested in speaking with jeffrey hales he's the issb board member that's coming to present just to see what the issb intends to do it's still kind of a sister organization to the financial reporting framework i'm interested to see how sustainability can merge with financial reporting because at the end of the day, financial reporting is profit driven. So and it's focused on the shareholder and like the debt holder. And I'm interested in how sustainable disclosures can impact other types of stakeholders as well. So this conversation should be illuminating, hopefully, what the ISSB wants to do, or maybe we can actually contribute to what the ISSB can do. Here's what we want from the academic side. And from the research aspect, I'm, I'm just very interested to see what my peers around the world are doing, just the very different ways. Just to clarify, you know, when you say other stakeholders, who do you mean? You and I, like we're part of society. The consumers in an organization, government are stakeholders. So all, all of us are, the animals outside are technically stakeholders inside a business because they are impacted. They don't have a say, unfortunately, because they can't speak, right? But they are like a stakeholder inside any sort of organization. So that's what I mean. It's more than just who owns a business or who's financing it with debt. It's all of us are impacted by business decisions. Yeah, especially when we think about sustainability and climate exactly. and environment, yeah. right? The stakeholder circle widens. Yeah. With sustainability, we always, it's very easy for us. We always think of emissions and climate change. But again, like we're all impacted by diversity inside our organization as well. So we all, there's a lot of different ways that are more than just the environment that businesses contribute to bad outcomes or can contribute to better solutions by just approaching different aspects in a stakeholder manner. This also goes back to your definition of sustainability that you talked about in the beginning of our conversation. Accounting looks at the whole organization's so has everything to do with sustainability. So it's about meeting an organization's needs now without sacrificing the needs of future generations and balancing short-termism versus long-termism, as you said. So in, in that definition, it's what I would call a stakeholder view of any sort of organization. It's more than just who owns the organization or who's financing it. It's everybody who has a stake, which is where we get the word from, inside that organization. So the consumers, the employees, the local community that an organization operates in, these are all impacted by business decisions or nonprofit decisions. It's nice if they have a say and we think about the impact to them as well, not just to issuing dividends to our owners, say if I'm a corporation or paying back my loan with interest to a bank. There are other impacts organizations have besides those two financiers. So what's the best we can do to balance it and make everybody as happy as they can? We're dealing with the reality of We're the moment, We're dealing right? with the reality, yeah. Thank you so much for talking with me. This was fun. Thanks so much, Robin. Good to talk with you. Our guest today on the Delve podcast was Desotel Professor Brian Wenzel, discussing accounting and sustainability and the need for organizations, leaders, and regulatory bodies to address these issues today. This conversation is also in light of the upcoming McGill Accounting Research Conference, this year taking on the theme of sustainability. The conference is happening in person at McGill University on June 7th and 8th. I'd also like to note that this episode of the Delve podcast is a collaboration between the McGill Sustainable Growth Initiative, SGI Director Javad Nasiri, and Delve. You can find out more about these topics on delve.mcgill.ca. 
Thank you for listening to the Delve podcast produced by Delve, the thought leadership platform of the Desotel Faculty of Management at McGill University. You can follow Delve McGill on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram, and subscribe to the Delve McGill podcast on your favorite podcasting app. For updates from Delve, you can subscribe to the Delve mailing list at delve at mcgill